We have them ready. Yes, ma'am. Good to go. I'd like to call the meeting to order for October 26, 2021. Could you please rise for a moment of silence? Would you please join in the pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Here. Trustee Hunter. Here. Trustee Good. Here. Okay, and we do not have any minutes to approve. On to financial reports. I'll make the motion to pay our expenditures. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yes. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee Good. Yeah. And do we have any? Um, I won't consider you visitors because you are residents. <laughs> Do we have anybody on? Just Hannah. Okay. Hi, Hannah. Hang on, let me unmute her. Okay, you can talk, Hannah. Good evening. How are you guys? Good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for attending. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Okay, we'll go on to our department reports. We'll go to the sheriff's department. Right. Hamilton. Yes. Um, so in the last two weeks, um, we had 126 calls to service in Pleasant Township. Uh, 12 reports were made out of those calls to service, two arrests, and six tickets. Um, burglaries, they had three, but actually when they got out there to the calls, they actually determined they weren't burglaries. So about put zero for actual. And then traffic jams or disabled vehicles. They responded to five at five of the eyes. Um, seven suspicious persons or vehicles were stopped in the two weeks. Um, they responded to six calls of possible thefts and actually zero were thefts once they got out there and talked to the individuals. Um, 15 accidents and nine alarm drops were the major, major calls. So I'm still working on a broken plane over here, over here on uh, Darby Boulevard. And that's Anything else for Deputy Hamilton? Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to introduce your? I can. This is Deputy uh, Bert Heron. He'll be taking over um, Prairie Township and then um, R71, which is Washington, Brown, Norwich, and uh, that way. So give me more time to focus down this way. Tell me your name again. I'm sorry. It's, it's Burton Heron. Okay. Yep. So, welcome to our meeting. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We'll move on then to road department. <clears throat> we had two tall repairs, one on Ball Court. It was kind of involved. Um, had one on Teal Court where we had received a complaint. That was an easy one. It was just the tile was collapsed, had a decent sized rock on top of it, and it was fixed. And hopefully, it's functioning like it should be now. The guardrail had that was on teal court. On teal court, yep. I can't remember the gentleman that was on teal with on it, but um, guard court, what did you do? Uh, replaced about a 40 foot section of tile that was. Plug. There's a willow tree back there. It is off of our easement. It's been a constant, a yearly thing. We get back here and try to snake it. And this time, couldn't do it. So we had to dig it up and pulled out some pretty crazy roots on that one. But I want to try to either talk to the homeowner or something just to see if that tree can be removed. I don't know if we have any way of legally going in there and cutting it. I'd have to maybe contact the county for some guidance because I'm sure 
there might be a law somewhere if so, a tree's causing just ongoing maintenance of the drainage system, we might be able to do something about it. Maybe you could talk to the I've spoken to him before about it, but one minute he's like, cut it down. But, but yeah. it was so, um, the guardrail has been repaired. I'm repaired for the pipe. <clears throat> I, I've been getting a bunch of phone calls about cycle carts people being. I looked on our website about. A lot of these homes are people who've just moved in. So I don't know if the homeowners that are moving away are taking them with them instead of leaving them to the next owner. But I don't know if that's something we could add to the website to maybe let people know that you know, that is technically township property and it wasn't a freebie for them to take it with. So the guru idea. Do we have a list of? Did they give us a list of? I don't have to one. That had to be a. It was a list. List. I'm wondering if who some of the ones that one he picked up because they didn't want them. Remember, that's first, awesome. It could, I'm just. It's been like. How many? Ten or fifteen. We got only. We've got about twenty-three left. I think that's what we counted. And I think we started with around. Distribution of food. Well, I mean, just, yeah, well, we had to deliver some, pick some up, right. so it's been so probably you to start keeping track of all those addresses. I have been for and a while. Maybe some track down who lived there previously to <laughs> see if they were. Yeah, I don't, picked one up from. I don't remember getting a list of everything that was delivered. So I think they did some in electronic goods and did. They may not be moved to. Okay. So, yeah, I went into the recycle part of the website to. So Other than that, we pop the tire on the Ford F three fifty, and after looking at the rest of the tires, we went ahead and replaced all six of them because I wasn't comfortable going in the snow season with the tread that we run because on there I had a price. For, is there a price on yours? I wrote a price on either yours or Paul's. Um, I don't have a price on mine, but so, it's from Wilson. Yeah, it's in the bill. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm going to see. Um, I priced a couple different people. One people had three of them. They weren't sure how soon they could get the other three. So I don't know. If that's one of them supply chain problems where I have to go over the place. So I went ahead and that truck's pretty handy for us. So I wanted to get them on there. And, um, that's all I have. Anything else for Hundred ten runs for October to date uh, for the month. Um, a couple of maintenance items we uh, 
responded to an auto accident on the freeway on Saturday. And as you well know about the construction out there, we were riding the berm uh, to get to the accident because traffic was stopped all the way back up to 62. And they struck a uh, what they believed to be a muffler uh, truck. They, they pulled it up under uh, from the rear, rear duels and kicked it up in the air and kind of did a little bit of damage to the trim around the wheel well and whatnot. They were able to fix it without any any issues, but uh, I just want to let you know that there was a little minor incident on the freeway. Um, the tanker will be leaving Monday for All-American for that uh, frame repair. And uh, in, in theme with tires, we had tires put on the pickup truck today too as well. So it's still a Ziegler tire right now who had the best price for us on those tires. Um, we're gonna be, uh, we, we attended a training fire uh, last week in uh, Sayota Township. Actually, two weeks ago, now, on the 14th. Um, we are doing host testing as weather permits. Uh, we should have that wrapped up by the end of the month. And I would like to reiterate Ed's uh, appreciation of you guys getting that driveway sealed today. It is definitely appreciated. You're welcome. Um, I know you guys work long and hard on that one, and you're walking very gingerly this evening. So mm -hmm. I appreciate the hard work. So, um, Circleville Fire borrowed the. Uh, and returned to UTV for the pumpkin show. Chief Thompson thanked us for uh, the use of that. That came in very handy for them, especially since it's a four seater. The other ones they had were two seaters, so they were able to utilize that quite quite well. So that's nice. Um, and we'll be uh, at a training fire in Jackson Township on Zuba Road near 665 uh, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. The tanker will be over there, and the on duty crews will be over there as available. So we'll be over there. Um, I have two requests this evening. Uh, both of them are resignations, a uh, resolution to accept the resignation of part-time firefighter Andrew Morales. I'll make resolution 69 to accept the resignation of part-time firefighter Andrew Morales. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee Good. Yes. Before we go on, do, have you matched up? I have not, okay. but I will. And a second resolution to accept the resignation of part time firefighter Caleb Dick. I will make resolution 70 to accept resignation of part time firefighter Caleb Dick. The second. Second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yep. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee Good. And just to make you aware that, you know, we've had a few resignations lately. It's people that haven't been working for quite some time have just been reaching out and saying, hey, you need to make a decision here. So, unfortunately, their decision is to leave. but. Um, it's just people that haven't been on the books for you know well well over you know six months or so. Okay. Okay. And if you guys have anything for me, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on to old business. I will make resolution seventy one, approving and authorizing the execution of a joint stipulation and recommendation. In Ohio Power Sitting Board, case number 20 1679 EL BGN regarding the application of the Pleasant Plains Work Energy LLC. We'll have a second. I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets? Yes. Trustee Hunter? Yes. Trustee Yes. Yeah. Okay, and I don't think I put this on my list here for Bargain Flowers. This um, insurance, we've already renewed this, so this is just a matter of signing it, isn't it? On. You didn't have to renew it. Yet. Yeah, it had, it, I don't think it's been renewed yet. They're just asking us, are we going to keep it the same? The attached form confirms that the HRA plan will renew as is in 2022. Please have this form signed, dated, and returned. I think we're going to change it now for time, but I don't really know what we're going to renew next in May. I guess that'll just get us through since it's a 1 1. Okay, I start. All right, with the HRA. HRA. I will make 
Resolution 72. To renew as is 2022, the HRA plan that we have in existence now with Burnham and Flowers. Do I have a second? Roll call. Trustee Sheets? Yes. Trustee Hunter? Yes. Trustee Good? Yes. Find that one. Franklin County received and reviewed our letter dated September 28, 2021, regarding the county's towing and impound service program. I sent the response by email. Have you read it? Did you read it? Pretty much. States they appreciated hearing from us and it'll stay as it is. And I don't know, going through things, has that bound tree um, um I thing been taken care of? I had been called um and left a message and I hadn't heard back, but I had gave a um oh shoot. I went through all my bills and everything. And what happened was, is I pay the bills as we get the invoices. Um, at the end of December of 2020, the chief had me write a check rather than from an invoice on um, a, an order form where they had ordered. What is that machine? So it's, a, it's the vending machine for the medication. The vending machine. So that got paid in December. It was like 9,000 something. Well, then. As you know, and then in January, all through this year, the first six months, I'm paying the bills as I get them. Well, then in June, I get an, a statement from them saying that we have a nine thousand something dollar credit, and says that we can. So I don't know if it was because we paid it off an order form as opposed to them invoicing us for it, but it took them six months in their system for whatever to decide to put it back as a credit on our account. And it said on there that we could either ask for a refund or we could use it against future invoices. So I just been subtracting it because we have some pretty hefty bills from them. So just using the credit as payment as opposed to send them a check. So then they sent me another statement and they had gave us partial credit. They had subtracted part of the invoices, but they kept saying, what about these invoices? But it was their statement showing us using it as a credit. So, like, like I said, I'm not sure what's going on down there, but we have taken care of everything. And um, once I used up that credit, then I um, started paying them again. So, at our end, we've been paying everything or either taking it as a credit based on the information they were getting us. So, um, the machine hasn't came in. And so I'm assuming now that when they get the machine that they're going to send us an invoice for that amount and then we'll just repay that amount. Okay. So. I have all the information to talk to them the next time they call and if they need anything more, I'm going to give them call a cell phone number to, so they can speak to her directly about it. But I gave them a list of like every time I made a payment, what the, uh, Invoice date was what the invoice amount was, the invoice number was, and a tally of how the calculations were done as we went and what was either used as your credit or either was paid directly. Is there any other old business? Uh, new business. Paula? Okay. Um, we received a deposit um, into our account from the state for that um, recovery money in the amount of um, 
$49,978.16. So that was the first half. So I set up a new fund for it. So it's separate from everything else. And I set up a receipt account number showing that it's in the system, but I did not set up any appropriations. So I'll have to get information from you guys when you decide how you want that set up. For, for, what, for spending was this. It was, um, what account did I set it up as? Um, it's, uh, whatever I put, I titled it. Um, it's in your um, bills that I gave it to or, uh, reports. I gave it tonight. If you look under the receipt, um, I titled it. It's on a virus local fiscal recovery fund. Yeah. And it's, it'll be totally, uh, the money coming in and the expenditures will be kept totally separate from everything else. That we won't be able, or I won't be able to put any expenditures in the system until you tell me how you want it set up. Um, it was $348,978.16. So it was exactly half of what they were saying we should get. Okay. Um, we're so how do you want that set up? Well, work for you. What do you want us on the that first coronavirus money we got? I set up a couple um, line items for, or say like the trustees to use or general type expenditures. Then I set up for um, the fire department and then some for the road department, and then kind of divvied the money up a little bit so it was in there. And the appropriations and how we want to spend it. And I think that would tell her what lines to okay and then create. Right now, we really don't know what we right and you right. spend it on got multiple years. So yeah, yeah. So you're not in a big rush to do it. I'm just letting you know that I set it up in the system as an account, so it showed where we got the money. Okay, but I don't have anything set up for so once spending we start it. spending it. Yeah, we need to have those. Yeah, when you make the maybe, decisions, if we don't spend anything this year, we just try to set that at temps, right? Yeah. I mean, it'll just set there under the receipt. We don't even have to do any appropriation accounts this year until you get ready to you think you're going to spend it. Okay, um, from Otarma, um, they sent me back copies of um, the new renewal policy. So I will copy that. I gave the department heads um, insurance cards to go in the vehicles, and we received um, a check back for $2,203.26. Um, received a couple letters or copies of letters from the Franklin County Public Health that they sent out notice of violations. Um, I think there was three different properties and they all had to do with um, the sewage treatment systems. Could we get copies of those? Sure. Yep. Um, this is kind of a newsletter from um, the State Department of Employment. Um, received um, several um, just copies of information on an injured worker from DWC. Um, quarterly report from Deferred Comp. Um, several notices from Swaco. They had sent out an email and then they actually sent a letter that on, um, let's see, tomorrow, the 27th, that they're doing a uh, public briefing on proposed recycling facilities and other SWACO initiatives. Anybody's interested in that? Um, newsletter from SWACO, a couple news releases from SWACO. Uh, tech review committee um, was scheduled for today. A newsletter from Morksy, a newsletter from Franklin County Slurry and Water. Um, some information on our manufactured home parks, um, an update on broom and flower on their contact information, uh, just kind of an informational email from Bureau of Workers Home, and that's all. Anything else for Paula? We will go on to our speaker sheets. Sarah, do you want to? Uh, yeah, I guess come up here sure. if you want to, and when I explain the pictures, I put them with your email. 
just update from a couple of years ago. This property's basically been abandoned for about a year now, um, continuing to deteriorate and drainage is a problem. But um, I had a contractor come out and look at it to advise the stability of it, whether it's uh, even viable to build on it or what what should be done with it. And his main concern is that the west side is really in imminent danger of collapse. And myself and other neighbors have observed children playing on the site. So there's really nothing to keep anybody off of the site. And living right across the street, I'm just concerned of the danger of it at this point. And haven't really had any luck getting anyone out to actually say something needs to be done, something needs to be enforced here because the, the owners just don't seem to have any concern. So can we compel somebody at the county to come out and say, yes, this is dangerous. Well, the landowner's got to do something rather than just leaving it to. Has it been like that for two years? It's done out like that. It's they start, they started to dig it when I was first here two two and a half years ago. Um, they've dug it out more since. So really last summer uh, they really went at it, came back much further and put in some concrete work, footer work. And then the landowner passed away and it has sat really untouched for a solid year now. There's really no other than throwing down a few bales of hay. There's no mitigation as far as runoff or mud or. The soil and water lady Brooke Brusher came out and looked at it. She apparently advised the landowner to put plastic over to try to help with erosion, but that usually only lasted a few weeks. And at this point, most of it is down. And just kids playing, throwing, throwing the concrete blocks that they were using to hold the plastic in place, kids have done them in. It's really just kind of dangerous at this point. Do you have to know what they mean to do there? I spoke to a member of the family a number of months ago. At the time, she said that uh, because it was a, the, the landowner's daughter, because her father hadn't had a will, it was tied up in probate. I think that has since been discharged through Madison County. That's that's where they apparently live. I looked it up on Audemars site and it said that's the uh, address. Was okay. Okay. Um, I have not heard anything back. They said that they intended to sell it once it was out of probate. I did ask them if they would contact me, I would be interested. And that's why I had that contractor come out to tell me what can be done with this at this point. I don't want to build a house. I would just like to make sure that it's not going to fall down. And his best advice was to have it condemned and fill it back in. Because it's pretty much just going to be a danger. Whatever work they've done really is pretty well destroyed at this point. There's a footer, but it's heaved up and it's no good. So <coughs> just afraid of it collapsing still. I don't know what could be done other than bring in a bunch of dirt. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions? I'll check with a few people tomorrow. Just to, I would think that the building department would have some say in it, but they don't. <clears throat> it's just something I'll have to find out. Building public health, Dartmouth building. What else? It's, I'd say, seeing as how there's a well on it, public health probably. Would get involved at one point on trying to decommission the well. Yeah, I'll just have to make a few phone calls tomorrow and see if I hit cold somewhere. Well, do you have any contact? Kind of
family and all? Yeah. Did you ever? Um, was it Brooke that got them to come out with the plastic out? Well, no, the last time, which it's been quite some time, I emailed Mark and told him that his uh, the DMPs he put in place were not up to snuff. He needs to come out and make better. Plans on how to keep the eroding. I guess at this point, it's just a question of who's who's going to enforce this. Somebody's got to enforce it because somebody could get killed. I don't. I don't want to try to contact the family anymore because I don't want to be the pain in the ass across the street. And that's why I come to you and say, "Can you guys take some kind of action?" That just, but we'll start. Let's the we'll county know that there's a concern. You start with your phone calls. Keep in touch with us, and you know, do we have those? Kids? Yeah, absolutely. Talk to the kids playing there, and we'll picture the well. I think if that backside collapses much more, a lot more of that pipe, the kit well casing is going to be exposed pretty soon. I don't know how deep that goes, but did you just send that to me or did you send it to Robert? To I did not send it to you. I I'll forward it on to you, Robert. Okay. So if you need to forward it <clears> on to <throat> any other agencies, you've got those pictures. Address and everything. But you said Brooke was and has asked for her name and the address of the property. Um, and as our reporter, she's she's on camera. Uh, it's, <laughs> uh, that property is 6942 Avon Drive. Okay. And what was your last name? Carlsberger with a K. Sarah, right? Yes. Sorry, what did you ask? <laughs> um, Oh, Brooke. Brooke. Oh, yeah. She said she might be in the area today. Well, that's what okay. like, it come out when I talked to her. I thought she said she's going to be out this way too. Yeah. Today. So I was kind of hoping she'd contact me when she. And she had said she would try to get back to me with whomever right. might be a contact at the county, but I haven't heard back yet. So that's why I kind of threw up my hands and said, getting anywhere. Any? We will try. Okay. And we will keep you informed if uh, we shoot one of us at this mail. Other questions? Yeah. Or do you have any other information? Just, just try to go out and wave my hands if I see kids. I was telling Robert if the kids see anybody out there, they just scatter. But it, you know, the neighbor has noticed them out there too. So mm -hmm. I don't know who they are. I don't want to be the one to go out and yell at the kids either. So. Kids are going to be too. Yes. Yeah. I, hey, if I really good, I'd be playing in there myself. <laughs> Try to get something done for you. Oh, yeah. Thank you much, Jim. Started out, I really didn't have a whole lot tonight. I just wanted to update Chief Taylor with our Kirk and Creek plan changes. So he's he's been made aware of that. What are your changes? Uh, well, we originally were going to do it on the 30th at the Conquer Tree. Would you like to come up here and oh. then you're on camera? Oh, no. <laughs> Nobody wants to be on camera. No. So, uh, our original plans were for Trick or Treat plus uh, Family Fun Fest on the 30th. Uh, we had a little bit of a revolt on that, and some of the residents came to our meeting and our committee person wanted to change it anyway, so we split the two. We had our family fun last Saturday. Uh, Trunk or treat is now trick or treat on the 28th, 6 to 8. Okay. Door, door to door, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we get the yeah, influx of the township on the 30th, well, that's their problems. <laughs> we set the the Township took a treat to your night. <laughs> in Harrisburg as well. Harrisburg, Harrisburg has their event that night as yeah. well on, yeah. on the 30th also. So also, Grove Cities, I believe, is the 28th. Yeah, they want they wanted to go with Grove City. Mm -hmm. Why I don't know. So 
let our population speak. <laughs> Um, also, did want to let you know I did uh, receive the information on setting up the neighborhood watch program. I forward that to the rest of our board members. We will start discussions on November 10th at our next board meeting. And um, I'm sure you're quite aware it takes several months to get yeah. rolling. People, like you said, getting together, coordinating. <laughs> and um, when the time comes, we'll probably need a gathering place for a community meeting. I'm hoping we utilize one of the bays over the firehouse, but we can address that when the time comes. Um, want to back up with your uh, situation here on Teal Court. I don't think this is really going to be relevant, but two of the three, uh, two of the five phases we have in Timberlake have deed restrictions on tree removals for aesthetic reasons, requiring the board approval. Don't think Teal Court is in one of those phases, but I'll double check. But it is, I'll let you know. No. In Wall Court. Wall Court. court of the oh, Wall Court. Yeah, I never that's mind. Completely different. Never mind. It's <laughs> out of my jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, Trustee Hunter, I did have a question for you. Um, we had a have an issue ongoing on Cardinal Drive. I think the address is 5515. About the uh, driveway has been totally lined with uh, junk and kids' toys and inflatable swimming pool. The garage door is always open. And uh, one of our board members was, uh, thought you were going to take care of that with the zoning commission. Are you aware of that or have you done anything with it? I was not aware of it. Okay, we will take care of it then. I just wanted to clarify that. And, Make sure something gets done. <laughs> and that's at 5515 Cardinal Drive? I believe it is. It's um, when you turn on Cardinal Drive, I believe it's the first house on the left. And what's the complaint? Uh, the garage door is continually open. Uh, the garage is filled with junk. You know, it's just a, a mess. And the driveway is completely lined with uh, boxes. Kids' toys and a playful swimming pool. Just looks like crap, to be honest about it. And it kind of makes you wonder, well, what's go, what else is going on in the property? So we had it on our agenda to uh, call the zoning uh, enforcement officer and see if he would take a look and see if we can't get that property cleaned up. It almost sounds like that's public help, not zoning. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just went down. Uh, like I said, it was on uh, last two meetings. Uh, was mentioned that um, you had said you would step in and, and talk with the zoning department. But if you're not aware, then there's misinformation. So we'll we'll take it from our end and handle that. So and that was on as on Cardinal. Cardinal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't. What do you think? Do you think that sounds like? Zoning or it's probably a zoning issue. It's invisible from Lambert. I mean, you can see it. Yes, mm -hmm. inside problem. Yeah, the outside. That's it. That you don't have deed restrictions and the homeowners association. Uh, deal with that kind of stuff. Well, um, yeah, we can probably find some deed restrictions, but then you know, how do we enforce that? We go to court, yada yada yada. And uh, we're facing dam issues. We're going to be spending a lot of money on our dam. <laughs> so, uh, but I'd like say, all what, I would. What zoning violations? <clears throat> Yeah, 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 yeah. And debris would be the same with ours. We we have uh, deed restrictions on nuisance. Hey, Chad, I may. How long ago did you bring this up? I may have sent that to Patrick. Oh, okay. That, that would be the, at least two months ago. Because we talked about it the last three months at least, mm -hmm. and I think it was two months ago they said that. Uh, Trustee Hunter was going to step in and don't know what conversation took place on that, but 
I just want some clarification and information and I so I can go to our next meeting and say yay or nay and what if any progress had been made. Patrick Young is the zoning. Yes, so I enforcement I've, officer. I've got his number in my little book of numbers. Tomorrow I'll send him another email. Okay. Because I think I did send that to him. Okay. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'll do the same thing. We'll, yeah. we'll it, it would do it from both directions. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, that's basically everything I have. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have anything else? Um, I forgot. I had sent you that email lap or message about the resolutions for doing the street lighting. That one I don't remember seeing. Oh, I sent it in. Yeah. Well, it, it was at the last meeting, but I didn't wasn't going to be here. But anyways, I need a resolution to authorize me to do street lighting for Cumber Lake. And then if you'll do a separate one to do street lighting and for renewals. What was the other one? The second one? Thornhill and Timber Lake. But if you can do them in two separate resolutions. It's just authorizing me to calculate those and send the information into the county auditor's office. I will make resolution 72. 73. Seven, I'll make resolution 73 to authorize Paula to calculate and send the lighting district information or Timberlake mm -hmm. to the auditor. I'm second. Okay. Roll call. Um, trustee Sheets? Yes. Trustee Hunter? Yes. Trustee Good. Yes. And I'll make resolution 74. Authorized Paul to calculate and send Thornhill Lighting District information to the auditor. Second. Second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yes. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee. Yes. Anything else? Then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Have a second. Roll call. Trustee Sheets. Yes. Trustee Hunter. Yes. Trustee. Yes. We adjourn at seven forty-five.